Hey guys, a question I get a lot is that how do I figure out how big to make my pixel art? And hopefully I have a few tips that can help you figuring that out. First off, I want you to not think too much about your canvas size. Because you can change the canvas size on the fly at any moment, both making it bigger or smaller. So first of all, just make sure you have enough space. So there's few things I always keep in mind creating pixel art such as what media is it for, what features on the pixel art is the smallest, and how big does those features need to be. But let's take one of the time and look through what's important. First off, it's really important to know what media your pixel art is being used for. Are you creating your pixel art for a game? Will it be used for an avatar for a YouTube video? Or are you just creating a piece of art that will be posted online? Anyhow, let's get into it. So one of the things I always keep in mind is, what is the smallest feature that needs to be visible? Because if the smallest feature on your sprite is visible, every other feature sure will be visible as well. For example, if we look at Mario, he has a lot of iconic traits on him. But it's not the most important feature we are looking for, but instead it's the smallest feature we are looking for. You can see I highlighted Mario's eyes, hands and buttons of all things. And the reason for that is, those are the smallest features on the sprite that we need to be able to see. And by creating those features first, everything else will automatically be clearly visible on the sprite. The same goes for Sonic. He has a ton of iconic features, such as his spikes, shoes, and his very expressive attitude, and a ton of terrible games in the past few years. Please bring us a good Sonic game soon. No, but again, what we would do here would not be to create those most iconic features, but instead again, look at what those smallest important visible features would be. In Sonic's case, I'd say his eyes are pretty important, but also his nose is something that you would want to be able to see on his sprite. But again, by making those character features as small as we can, then everything else sure will be visible on the sprite. With all that said, you don't always want to make the smallest important feature on the sprite as small as you can. There's another factor to it that you want to keep in mind when you've found the smallest feature, and that is how big does it need to be? So there wasn't any other important features on Scott's model than his eyes and hand. Not that we can see anyway. So like the Mario and Sonic sprite, we could have just made Scott's eyes a few pixels tall. Though if we did so, a lot of those expressions that we would need to show would not be clearly visible. So therefore we need to figure out how small we can make those features and still make them show all the things that we want to. So the eyes for an example. He needs to be able to move his eyes around in a visible, clear way, as well as he needs to be able to express himself with emotions, if Scott has any of those. Along with the hands where he needs to be able to grab things, or throw a sick hand sign once in a while. So first off, figure out what the smallest feature on your sprite is, then figure out how big that feature needs to be, and then create the rest of the sprite with that in mind. Of course you could just make your sprite huge, and not even think about it. But one thing I like about making pixel art is making it as small as I can, and still be able to translate all the features that the sprite needs to showcase. But I'm also mostly creating sprites for games, so I might have a slightly different perspective on it than some others, so just keep that in mind. So let's try and compare the Mario and Scott Pilgrim sprite real quick. The entire Mario sprite is smaller than Scott Pilgrim's face, meaning that Scott's face needs to be as expressive as the entire Mario himself. I hope that gives you some perspective on the whole size thing. So let's take a look at the difference between small and big pixel art and see what the difference pros and cons are. So starting out by looking at small pixel art. So the smaller your pixel art is, the easier and faster it's going to be to make. And like I talked about in my Learn with Limits video, small pixel art is just really good for beginners, like giving yourself limits by size and colors is a good thing for uh, for beginners. So. Small pixel art is also really good if you're new at making pixel art. Though some of the cons about small pixel art is that you're kind of missing out on the details and you won't be able to get as much detail on your sprite as you would if you were creating a bigger sprite. Though small pixel art is good for newcomers, only creating small sprites forever will make you less experience. But remember, don't take too big bites either. Alright, so let's look at some of the pros and cons with big pixel art. The good thing about big pixel art is that we can capture more expressions, like with the Scott Pilgrim sprite we talked about earlier. It's also a lot more rewarding. 
it's going to be much more rewarding for you creating a bigger and much more detailed sprite. Also, some job offers might need to see those bigger and detailed sprites rather than just small, simple 16 by 16 sprites. So you'll definitely need to eventually move on and practice bigger sprite. All right, so let's look at some of the cons with big pixel art. So with everything else, the bigger you aim, the more time and work you have to put into something. And the same goes for pixel art. It is just more time consuming making bigger pixel art. Another thing is misplaced pixel is going to be so much easier to see on a bigger piece of pixel art, especially something like jaggy lines or bad anti-aliasing. And then I put a yellow one down here because I'm not really seeing it as a con, but more as a problem, I guess. I see a lot of people going into pixel art because they are thinking they can skip the whole being able to draw step. And yes, you don't require to be good at drawing to make pixel art as much as you would with many other art forms. But pixel art is still an art form, so no harm to draw or just understanding the principles of drawing and design will help you out greatly. A little disclaimer here. I want to point out, although big pixel art may come off as a bad thing compared to small pixel art, it's all about where your skills are. Though again, are you new at this? Then stick to the safe zone for a little while before trying to take on the bigger challenges. And in the end, both of these really have good things to bring to the table. So none of them is better than the other. It's really just what you prefer, I guess. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful and if it was, make sure to hit the like button down below. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Also, you can support me on Patreon, where you can help me help you by creating more content like this. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!